Community College. I am Cynthia Rose, the interim chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees and a proud member of the class of 1970. It is my honor and my privilege to open this ceremony to break the ground for the first new building at the Fall River campus since 2001. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Jack and Jack's family. I know they're around here. They're, thank you for coming. This is also a bittersweet moment for all of us here at Bristol Community College because of who is not here. The board's chair and most devoted champion, Fernando Garcia, was eagerly anticipating this day. Sorry. Many of you know we lost our beloved chair earlier this week when he passed on. Please pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. In the Standard Times this morning, there was a piece about Fernando, and at the end of that piece, they said, and I quote, we hope today there is someone to pick up his mantle. I am here to tell you that I can never fill his shoes, but I will certainly lead by his example and know that my dedication to BCC and his students will be in the forefront of my being also. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I would now like to introduce trustee James Grady who has a special message. Good afternoon. The dedication I'm about to read was written by our Board of Trustee Chairman, Fernando Garcia, and was discovered among his papers yesterday by his friend, Steve White. It was Fernando's wish that it be read today, and it is with great honor that I now do so. Dedication of the John J. Sprager PhD Health and Science Building, Friday, 23 May, 2014. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, administrators, faculty, staff, students, and colleagues. My name is Fernando Garcia, and I am the chairperson of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. We are gathered to celebrate in advance the legacy of Dr. Don J. Sprague, president of Bristol Community College. Since joining BCC on 1 July 2000, Dr. Sprague has ushered in an era of growth. As a result of his leadership, Bristol Community College is the largest undergraduate educational institution south of the 128 Beltway. His 14 years of leadership have been exceptional by all accounts, and today we get to acknowledge his service by naming our new Health and Science Building in his honor. The John J. Sprague PhD Health and Science Building positions Bristol Community College for the future, a future for which Dr. Sprague has systematically laid the foundation over the past 14 years to provide access to all students in our region to careers in the knowledge-based economy. Not often does one get to witness the naming of a building in their honor during their lifetime. The poem, Measure of a Man, is read too late for the honoree to hear. Exceptional people are worthy of exceptional accolades. Dr. John J. Sprague is such a man. Jack, your impact on our region and its citizens is exceptional. Your dedication to providing access to higher education is transformative. The number of lives that you have changed for the better, too numerous to count and your leadership in our community unparalleled. You have made our community a better place for all and have done so selflessly. It gives me great pleasure to dedicate the John J. Sprague Health and Science Building in your honor. But please know 
that we know that the dedication of this building to you in your lifetime isn't an adequate acknowledgement of your impact on our lives. You truly are exceptional, and we are thankful to have shared our lives with you. Because of you, Bristol Community College indeed changes the world by changing lives, learner by learner. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you for reading that. Um, this was the most difficult part of this program. I remember reading a poem years ago, and it's called The Dash, and it, it states simply that you're not measured by the beginning number or the end number. You're measured by what you've done in that dash. And so Fernando lives on with, uh, with us. Thank you. Today we mark the beginning of construction for the John J. Sprager PhD Health and Science Building. The building construction is funded through Governor Deval Patrick's Higher Education Bond Bill and comes at an auspicious time for the college. Under the leadership of Dr. John J. Sprager, third president of Bristol Community College, enrollment at the college has grown by 83%. In 2000, the college was the seventh largest among the 15 Massachusetts community colleges in the state. Now, it is the second largest. Even before much of this growth, Bristol had the largest space deficit in all the public system. We were, and still are, cramped for general classroom and dedicated learning space. So this new building will play an important role in achieving our mission priority of student success. But this building does more to meet our mission than just providing learning space. It will house programs that are critically needed in the Commonwealth, in nursing, dental hygiene, and the life sciences. State of the art is a cliche, but the construction and the outfitting of this building will demonstrate the true meaning of this phase. With the most up-to-date and safest technology in the industry, our students, who are residents of the South Coast, will experience the very best in learning environments. They will learn in environments that mirror professional clinical sites. A vital part of our mission as a community college is our role in preparing the community for the jobs of the present and of the future. Healthcare and sciences are critical needs in this region. The investment in our community will prepare our residents for the jobs that are here now. But wait, there's more. Another, co another critical strategic priority for the college, and indeed for the Commonwealth and for the world, is the effective use of resources. This building has been designed with the ambitious goal to be a LEED Platinum building, the highest certification level. The LEED rating system offers four certification levels for new construction, certified, silver, gold, and platinum that correspond to the number of credits accrued in five green design categories. Sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, and indoor environmental quality. It will be one of the first buildings of this type in the country to be net zero. In fact, to commemorate, to commemorate our goal of platinum LEED certification, we will break ground with platinum shovels. <laughs> what is a net zero building? A net zero building has zero net energy consumption, meaning the total amount of energy used by the building on an annual basis is roughly equal to the amount of renewable energy created on the site. 
The building will use a combination of solar, geothermal, and design strategies to accomplish the goal of net zero. We are proud that the John J. Sprager PhD Health and Science Building will be a beacon of sustainability for Bristol Community College, the Commonwealth, and the nation. We have many partners who have helped us get to this day. We wish, I wish to acknowledge them, the members of our legislator delegation who are here today. And I will call out their names. <laughs> Representative Carol Fiola, she's here, thank you. <laughs> State Representative Robert Cazera, thank you. <laughs> Representative Christopher Markey, I thought I saw him, I guess I didn't, he's not here. No, nope. Chris Markey. <laughs> Representative Elizabeth Poria, thank you. Representative Paul Schmidt III. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Michael Rodericks, he is here. Thank you. From the Fall River City Council, Mr. Paul De Silva. And Mayor William Flanagan, Mayor of the City of Fall River. Uh, Representative Steve Howitt, he is also here. Thank you, sorry, thank you. An essential partner in the endeavor of the is the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, also known as DCAM. DCAM manages the construction and renovation of the Commonwealth's property, and they have been by our side as we, as we have gone through the dreams the designs, and now the development of this new building. Here to say a few words regarding this great day is Carol Knielsen, Commissioner for the Department of Capital Assessment, Management, and Maintenance. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. I am really, really pleased and thrilled to be here for this celebration. In fact, I'm going to call it a party. It's a party, and all of you uh, look at exci as excited as I am. I'm excited to celebrate this kickoff for this new, for a really first step in building Bristol Community College's new John J. Sabriga PhD Health and Sciences Building. Today, we're moving forward on another partnership that will expand your campus and further define Massachusetts as a leader in energy conservation. But I have a little personal note, because my oldest granddaughter, I just shared with President Sabriga, uh, actually attends Bristol Community College, and she's so thrilled, and she's doing well. At the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, we're proud to be part of the Patrick Administration's commitment to building higher education facilities that lay the foundation for more opportunities for our students. By making investments in education and infrastructure a priority, DCAM has been able to help schools construct top-notch buildings across the Commonwealth. These facilities are modern, they have innovative features, and that's just not limiting uh, those uh, innovations to classroom space. Working together in this instance, BCC and DCAM have already implemented measures to reduce the use of electricity, natural gas, and water, resulting in tens of thousands of dollars in savings. These energy conservation measures put us at the top of the list for energy projects at colleges in New England. The, this new building, this new facility will include, and uh, there, some of the features have already been mentioned to you, but renewable power from a rooftop photovoltaic system, uh, geothermal heating and cooling systems, and filtering recirculating fume hoods that will greatly reduce exhaust and improve air quality. This building is also expected, as we were told, to achieve 
zero net energy use. This means, again, that the energy generated on site through clean renewable resources is equal to or greater than the total amount of energy consumed. I'd like to commend, really, the entire team that's been working on this project thus far, especially the Bristol Community College team, but also the architects, the engineers, along with our DCAM team, who very early identified an opportunity to design this building to achieve zero net energy. They pursued that goal through a shared and comprehensive process, enlisting life cycle cost analysis, sophisticated energy modeling, and collaborative decision making. That's really what it takes. This project truly represents the type of teamwork that we need in order to be responsible stewards of the environment and the Commonwealth's assets. It's certainly going to be a, a project that we're all going to be very proud of. The Patrick administration's investment in this project, as you all know, is substantial. $35.9 million in capital funding, um, and then an additional $10 million for renovations to the Siegel Health Technologies and Science Building. That's also going to happen. When completed, this campus will have new clinical spaces for the dental hygiene program, modern classrooms and laboratories for nursing, biology, chemistry, and medical record students. These improvements will ensure that this college campus meets the needs of its students and, the, and meets the needs that the students deserve to have met. With the eventual opening of this 49,000 square foot facility, nursing and allied health professionals, both staff and students, will have access to more state-of-the-art uh, state resources and training, providing them with educational tools that would allow them to enter the ever-expanding healthcare field where Massachusetts is already a leader and pioneer. We know that building the best facilities for our students is essential to creating more job opportunities, creating a competitive workforce, and strengthening our overall economy. The Patrick administration's commitment to long-term targeted investments in education, innovation, and infrastructure has accelerated our economy and provided a guarantee that our higher education system will equip students to succeed. Thank you, President Sabriga, uh, also, thanks to our architect, Sasaki Associates, to our construction manager, Bond Brothers, and to everyone here today for your support for this exciting and essential project. I'd also like to just take a minute to personally thank my team from DCAM. I know Barry Heidke is not here today, but he's an essential member, but Duncan Grant, Elaine Campos, Steve O'Connor, and Jeff Friedas, if you guys can wave your hands or stand up so we can recognize you. I know and you know that this project will have a tremendous impact on the students here and on the entire campus community. I look forward to being here in 2016 when we cut the ribbon on this exciting facility. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. We are enormously thankful for your continuing strong support. We also have the benefit of great partners in the Department of Energy Resources for the Commonwealth Bristol Community College is committed to sustainable energy and we already have received a great deal of support from this agency on energy projects on the Fall River campus that has saved hundreds of thousands of dollars and a great deal of energy. I am pleased to introduce the director um, leading by example, pro the director of the leading by example program, Eric Friedman, from DOE, -O -E, who will outline how this project fits into the Governor Patrick's goals for energy use. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, let me start by saying uh, that six years ago, when Governor Patrick established a task force to look at zero net energy buildings and identify ways in which the Commonwealth could move forward in getting some of these buildings built, there were really only a handful of people that had ever heard of zero net energy buildings, much less knew how to build them. Here we are only several years later celebrating the, the ribbon cutting, the, the groundbreaking for a building that by all rights should never be zero net energy because it's a lab and a science building and yet here we are talking about it. So it's an incredible and extraordinary achievement for all of you here in this room who've played a part in making this building happen. Um, so it is really an honor and a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, I can see by the room that this is actually a big deal. Um, and it's great to be here, and you even have a cake, I think, back there. So what's a party without a cake, right, Carol? Um, and really, with, with so many distinguished guests and, and my colleagues at, at DCAM and at uh, Bristol Community, Community College, who've worked with you so, for so long and on uh, so many projects, it's really an honor to be here to celebrate really this exciting and innovative project. Um, on behalf of our Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary, Rick Sullivan, who will not be our secretary for that much longer. Those of you may have heard, he's now going to be moving over to chief of staff of the governor's office. Um, and our commissioner at DOER, Mark Sylvia, who is, for all, uh, as far as I know, still our commissioner. Um, <laughs> I want to really congratulate President Sprague and, and everyone here for making this building happen and for really focusing on sustainability and focusing on clean, clean energy. Um, and of course, Carol, I really want to congratulate you and your staff at DCAM. Um, this is not the only project where you have achieved such stellar results, and I really congratulate you for all of the work around sustainability that your office has embraced um, since you, you came into office. So we're here to look forward. We're here to talk about what's going to be happening as this building gets built and, and what it's going to achieve, but it's instructive sometimes to take a moment and just look back and understand where we came from and what some of the goals and targets were when the governor took office um, really little more than seven years ago. Um, as those of you may remember, when the governor came into office, he really focused on clean energy. Um, he was intent on creating a clean energy and innovation economy here in Massachusetts and really within a matter of weeks rolled up his sleeves and, and started down that path. Uh, the first state in the nation under Governor Patrick's leadership, we rolled together the energy and environmental offices into one office, now the hard to say EOEEA. Um, we also uh, uh, rejoined REGI, the first cap and trade program in, in the entire nation. And along with our partners in, in the state legislature, a number of you who are here today, uh, passed a number of critical pieces of, of legislation, including the Green Communities Act and the Global Warming Solutions Act, that really laid the policy framework to move a whole host of clean energy projects and programs and policies forward. And the results are pretty staggering. Um, we talk a lot at, at meetings about all the results, but let me just throw out a couple of statistics that I think are, are instructive. So first of all, Massachusetts has now been ranked number one in energy efficiency by the ACEEE three years in a row. This was no small feat to surpass California, which had been ranked number one for a number of years um, prior, prior to that, and they continued to nip at our heels, trying to, to overtake us uh, uh, yet again. Um, for the third straight year, the Massachusetts clean energy economy has grown at double digits. This is part of, of the Patrick administration's plan of not just creating clean energy programs for energy and environmental benefits, but also for our economy. Um, and since 2007, the amount of solar installed in Massachusetts has grown from 3.5 megawatts in 2007 to almost 500 megawatts today. Now, that basically doubled the goal, the governor's goal that he had set for 250 megawatts by 2017, four years early. We now have a new goal of 1.6 gigawatts by 2020. It's a lot of big numbers, but suffice it to say that we are doing really well, solar installation, the fourth, um, fourth fastest growing solar state in the country last, last year. But the governor also said that we can't really ask everyone in the Commonwealth to be doing all these programs, investing in clean energy, if state government isn't going to take the lead and really be innovative and adopt and embrace these same policies, these same programs. And so, again, early in the administration, he issued an executive order called Leading by Example, which essentially set very aggressive targets for a host of energy programs, greenhouse gas emission reductions, energy reductions, renewable energy, and also establishing a new green building standard for all state buildings. And DCAM has been working hard to, to meet and even exceed that standard. And so results at state facilities, including here at, at Bristol Community College, have really been impressive. 
We have reduced oil use by about 60%, eliminating uh, 14 million gallons of, of consumption. We have uh, seven and a half megawatts of solar installed at state facilities. That's up from less than uh, about 100 kilowatts in 2007. Uh, we have more than 10 megawatts of wind installed at state facilities, up from half a megawatt. We have 29 LEED certified buildings in the state portfolio now, with many, many others uh, in the queue to become certified. Um, and uh, Carol and her team are leading a $400 million investment in energy efficiency across virtually every state building that by the end of this year will have initiated comprehensive energy uh, efficiency programs. And Bristol has played its part. Uh, Real-time metering across all of the campus has helped to better manage energy use day to day here on campus. An energy project in collaboration with DCAM, uh, along with a, a almost 90 kilowatt solar array, has helped to reduce the use of grid electricity here on campus by about one and a half million kilowatt hours a year, 24 percent reduction from 2009. And all of these have helped to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 29 percent, or 1,500 um, metric tons. Um, which is equivalent to the emissions coming from over 300 cars on the road every, every year. So lots of great work going on here at Bristol Community College and across all of our campuses. So which brings us here today, and I apologize for that long introduction, and I, I know you want to get to the building, and so here, let's talk about the building just very quickly. Um, so it is really exciting to, to talk about this building. This is a truly innovative and new kind of building. Um, there are zero net energy buildings across the country. There are lead platinum buildings across the country, but very few of them have ever tried to achieve the kind of energy reductions and uh, lead platinum status and zero net energy status that this building is trying, is trying to achieve. You've heard a little bit about the technologies. Um, there are many more technologies um, beyond the solar and the ground source heat pumps. We've got uh, uh, Enthalpy wheel heat recovery. You can all look that up on Google when you go home. Um, we've got dramatically reduced lighting that will be in, in this building and while still providing enough light to do the necessary work. Natural ventilation with openable windows in the, in the atrium. Um, and air tightness standards. That doesn't seem very exciting, but this is a really a big deal in buildings where we are preventing air from leaking out or air from leaking in. And this is really an, an incredibly important thing and I, I commend everybody for, for looking at uh, some of these new strategies. But what really excites me is not the technologies because a lot of people can adopt that, but is what, how this building got designed. How people came together and said, our original process isn't working. And let me just tell you a little bit about how, how that happened. So the, the team got together and, and designed a building initially to meet the minimum green building standard for state buildings. And when they looked at the projected energy use, they realized that the electricity on campus was going to double. So this one building was going to double electricity use on campus. And it would have used the entire electricity output from the new three megawatt solar canopy array that the college is planning and putting in. So they were going to put in this huge solar canopy array. And this building was going to take all of that electricity. So I think a number of eyebrows were raised. People stepped back and said, wait a minute, this isn't really the right way to do this. It may be green according to the standard, but it's not really green when you look at the numbers. And so they went back and they started again. And as Carol said, they, they did new design. They investigated other technologies. They, they did research. They interviewed labs across the country. And the result, all these technologies that you've talked about, but it's a building that will now use 70% less energy than was originally designed. It will save one and a half million dollars in energy cost over 20 years. And here's the part I like. It will be built for a cost of $200,000 less than what was originally projected. So now instead of using the entire output from that three megawatt solar array, the building, in order to be net zero, will actually only have to use one third of the output, leaving the rest of that output for the rest of the campus. So let me summarize here, for those of you who got lost in all those numbers. 70% energy reduction, a million and a half energy savings, a zero net energy building, a consensus among all the players, the campus, the design team, DCAM, the science department, and all the stakeholders in the building, and no additional construction cost. I think that's a pretty good win-win for everybody.
So on behalf of everybody in our secretariat and really in within the entire administration, I want to congratulate and thank all of you for working so hard to make this building what it what it is and what it will be. And I, like Commissioner Cornelson, am excited to come back in what is it, 19 months slated for opening. So I'm excited to, to come back and, and celebrate with you here at that time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. Now, please allow me to introduce my colleagues on the Board of Trustees. Dr. Patricia Andrade, is she here? <laughs> Attorney James Grady, who you heard from earlier. Ms. Deborah Kenny. Mr. Christopher Mitchell. Dr. Ron Schwartz. <laughs> Ms. Diane Sylvia. <laughs> Attorney Max Volterra. <laughs> the role of the Board of Trustees is to oversee the policies and function of the college. One of our duties is to determine the naming of college facilities. In recognition of this extraordinary service as our third president, the board acted in November to name the new building in honor of Dr. John J. Sprager. As a board, we took this action in recognition of the ways President Sprager has changed the shape of the college, including an 83% increase in enrollment, the opening of learning sites in New Bedford, Attleboro, and Taunton, and the rapid expansion of online learning. He has enabled the college to become a powerful force in this region, and we believe it is only fitting to take this action in his honor. It will come as no surprise to those who know him that he wants to keep the focus on the benefit of the new building brings to the college, but I have asked him to bring his greetings to you all now. Once the trustees agreed to name the building in Dr. Sprague's honor, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Sprague? Oh, I'm sorry. Once the trustees agreed to name the building in Dr. Sprague's honor, the BCC Foundation immediately stepped up and said they wanted to use this opportunity to do even more for the college. I am pleased to introduce now Don Smith, president of the BCC Foundation, with some special announcements. Good afternoon. First and foremost, thank you all for attending this important event. The Bristol Community College Foundation is just thrilled to be part of this significant initiative. I need to wear my glasses. <laughs> I can't say enough how proud I am to be here today to support the groundbreaking of the John J. Sprague PhD Health and Science Building. President Sprague is a wonderful colleague and a friend he has gone above and beyond the norm to strengthen the BCC community. During President Sprague's tenure, Bristol Community College experienced a huge increase in enrollment and a 102% increase in degrees and certificates awarded. Civic engagement, expanded civic engagement, implemented a presidential fellowship program to enhance many academic programs at BCC. President Sprague, is devoted to student success. He works tirelessly to ensure that students have the tools they need to succeed. He created the One Stop Enrollment Center to make it easier for students to manage their enrollment. Students at BCC can now participate in InterVarsity basketball, soccer, or tennis. They may also take advantage of the dual enrollment and gateway to college high school programs. The Boston Globe characterized Bristol Community College as a high-performing and model two-year institution. Because of this and more, it is clear that Bristol Community College is worth the investment. The John J. Sprague PhD Health and Science Building will accommodate hundreds of students from our service area. 
We are planning to open it as part of our 50th anniversary celebration in 2016. We thank the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for improving funding for $27 million to make this building possible, as well as an additional $19 million to modernize our other three buildings in Fall River. However, this building will cost more than the $27 million to complete. In fact, $27 million will only cover the cost of the building itself. Private philanthropic support is imperative to outfit the building and ensure that students in our region have access to top-notch resources. Raising the needed funds for this building and other regional initiatives will not be easy. But we have asked two key individuals in the community to co-chair and launch a comprehensive fundraising initiative for BCC. I am pleased to invite Pat Murray, President and CEO of Bristol County Savings Bank, and Nick Christ, President of Bay Coast Bank, our campaign co-chairs, to share some exciting news about our fundraising initiatives. <laughs> Gentlemen. Thank you, Don. And uh, my piece this morning in the script is about this big. So I say that only because as I was getting ready to get up here, I heard a young voice behind me say, when is Grandpa going to get his trophy? <laughs> <laughs> and what a trophy it is, as you can see. <laughs> Don, you are absolutely right when you said that we have good news to share with everyone this afternoon. A few months ago, I was approached about this initiative. As past chair of BCC Foundation, I am honored to co-chair, along with Nick, this fundraising initiative. When we heard about this building and to whom it would be dedicated, the foundation board got together and started asking questions. The questions regarding this building weren't about what we can do, but what can I do? every member of our board stepped up to the plate and said, how can I help? So you can see, we are all here today for the students of BCC, our neighbors. The students truly are our, neighbor, our neighbors, and we owe the students access to a great education right here in their backyard. Uh, it's uh, really great to be here this afternoon. Uh, I see so many familiar faces, um, and I'm very pleased to be working with Pat as co-chair of the fundraising campaign. And as a co-chair, I realize the importance that BCC is in this community, has played in this community. BCC is doing a great, great things for the southeastern Massachusetts, and I am happy to be an integral part of the fundraising planning process. To kick off this campaign, I'm honored to announce that we've had a number of donors step up to support the college in the new building. The BCC Foundation has received a total of 1,405,000 from four leadership donors. I'd like to comment on the first one. The Virginia and Harold Lash Charitable Gift Fund has generously committed 800,000 to the John J. Spraga PhD <laughs> Health and At this time, I'd like to invite BCC nursing student and BCC uh, Foundation scholarship recipient Ann Brum to thank the Lashes for their uh, transformational gift. Ann. Thank you, Mr. Murray and Mr. Christ. I am Ann Brum. I'm a second year nursing student here at BCC. Um, I returned to school after many years of owning a small business in the service industry. I wanted to make a difference in my community, and I chose BCC to fuel that career and also my service opportunities. Um, I've been a BCC student ambassador and a multi-term student senator. And it has been um, 
very fortunate that I've served alongside a lot of dedicated students here. And I've served on various civic engagement initiatives in my time here. I'm very humbled to say that last evening I was awarded multiple um, awards for community service leadership. Uh, most recently, a Nurse Leader Award um, and the Nerman Civic Fellowship, which was quite an honor. In due time, Thank you. In due time, I would like to acquire my Masters of Science in Nursing and be able to educate the next generation of caregivers. I am now graduating from BCC, but I will not forget the Foundation's support and the opportunities it has opened up for me. Today, I will commit to support my alma mater once I continue and complete my educational journey. I want to express a thank you to the Lash family for their generous gift to BCC. This is something that your parents started. Thank you for making me and them very proud by offering educational opportunity to students and empowering them to succeed. On behalf of the Bristol Community College Foundation, I want to express my own appreciation to the Lash family. We truly appreciate all that you do for this institution. Please also know that your generosity has and will continue to inspire others to take your lead. On that note, I am extremely honored to announce today that Bristol County Savings Bank has committed a, a gift of $250,000 to our fundraising initiative. As a community bank, the Bristol County Savings Charitable Foundation's mission is to work collaboratively with community leaders and institutions to make our community a better place to live and work. As part of this mission, we place a real emphasis on education. BCC is an institution that mirrors our focus on community and obviously education. BCC is also led by a true community leader. And I would like to congratulate Jack Sprager on the honor of having the new Health and Sciences Building being named in your honor. It goes without saying that it is truly deserved. As I have gotten to know Jack over the past several years, it did not take very long to realize that he is a very humble man and would rather have the emphasis placed on BCC than himself. But in this case, they are one in the same. When I approached my board of directors at the bank with a recommendation of making a commitment to this institution and to this building, this trophy, <laughs> They enthusiastically approved it, not only for what it contributes to the education in our region, but also to honor an individual that has devoted his career to education, and we are lucky to have him as part of our community. Jack is truly committed to improving our community learner by learner. Jack, I thank you for allowing Bristol Community College Foundation to capitalize on your good name in this fundraising endeavor. It truly is a strength and a real opportunity for us. On behalf of the Bristol County Savings Bank, I also want to thank you. It is our pleasure to help BCC continue to make our community a better place to live and work. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Um, I re really didn't understand how unique and extraordinary uh, this building is, but it's so aptly named because we have truly a unique and extraordinary leader. Uh, 
the board of directors at Bay Coast Bank uh, will also match the 250 of, of Bristol County. And, You have to know that um, it's really twofold. One, it's uh, um, how important BCC is the community at large. It's perhaps the area's greatest asset. Um, if you think that education is an economic driver, perhaps the most important economic driver, uh, we have no question that uh, this is where uh, you can spend some money and have, have, spend it wisely. Uh, that coupled with its leadership that Jack has put together, his leadership team, we feel very, very confident that this money will be used uh, to put up a great building and continue uh, and provide the capacity that's so desperately needed on an ever-growing campus. Thanks, Jack. Gentlemen, thank you very much. That's, that's a great, great surprise. We have a fourth, um, as Pat, Pat stated earlier, this fundraising initiative is underway and we are truly breaking ground at lightning speed to support students in our community. Our steering committee members are with us today. Will the steering committee please stand up? Here. How about if I ask our foundation members who are here to please stand up? Foundation members? Thank you. Now they are part of a group of individuals who will fuel this next chapter with energy and enthusiasm, and I look forward to having more celebrations to student success in the near future. Now I have another surprise that we heard today. Our fourth leadership gift is from Mechanics Cooperative Bank. Joe? Joe Baptista, back there. <laughs> Joe and his bank is gonna commit $100,000 um, here today. And we, Joe, we really appreciate it. And I know you know their bank's slogan, let's keep it local. Um, <laughs> And I, and I told Joe I would say that because that's what's so important about Bristol Community College. It's your local resource, um, and it's, it's part of your community. And we'll be out there looking to, for your help, and we hope that you'll be able to help us uh, in trying to meet our goals of what we're trying to achieve. Now I'd like to call Jack, yep. President Spraga, back to the podium. What a wonderful morning this has been and afternoon. I did want to start out by uh, introducing a couple of other people. Uh, we have the city councilor, Paul De Silva, is here with us. <laughs> and we have someone who uh, can, uh, I guess, at least approach the sentiments and emotions that I feel today, and that is our previous president, Eileen Farley, who has had a building named after her. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And we have uh, one other distinguished guest. Well, we have many other distinguished <laughs> guests, but uh, someone else that I'd like to introduce and say a few words is the mayor of this great city of Fall River, Will Flanagan. Mayor Flanagan. <laughs> Thank it was great listening to all of the speakers uh, this afternoon. But the comments that I really enjoyed most was from President Sprague's grandson, Johnny. <laughs> and even though his comments are innocent, uh, they're very factual, Johnny, because champions receive trophies, and your grandpa Jack is a champion. 
Uh, he's a champion of education, and that's very fitting that this building be named in his honor. You know, it's very inspiring when I walk onto this campus because the future of the economy is here. No matter what you want to be, no matter what you want to do, this facility, this college provides you the education to achieve that. And under Jack Sprague's leadership, uh, he has really taken Bristol Community College to new heights. And it is the best community college in our region. And the students who receive their education here are getting an A plus education. And also uh, behind every successful man uh, is a great woman. And I see Joanne here. And Between Joanne and Jack, they deliver a great one-two punch for our community. And we are very fortunate to have the Spragas as citizens of the city of Fall River. But I had a chance also to joke with President Sprager as we were sitting here. And I said to him, traditionally, when you start to see a building named after you or something named in your honor, it usually means you're starting to turn down your career. I told him that's not the case. Uh, as mayor, I'll, we'll issue an executive order <laughs> that he can't leave Bristol Community College. So with that said, it's an honor for me to bring greetings on behalf of the city. And I could not think of a better person than to name your new building after. And Jack Sprager is a champion, Johnny. He's all about champions. God bless you, Jack. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, everyone. What a wonderful day and a wonderful occasion. It's, uh, I'm honored and humbled uh, on this momentous occasion. Uh, just no words to, uh, to describe it. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it really is, however, I want to make clear, it's a celebration of the wonderful people at BCC, and uh, they have made it a high-performing institution. The mayor said the best community college in the region. I'm sure he meant to say the country. <laughs> <laughs> but our BCC family is extraordinary, and uh, I'm accepting this honor really on their behalf. Uh, I cannot describe uh, my immense gratitude uh, to our BCC trustees, uh, and that brings me to our beloved uh, late chair, Fernando. Uh, it is fair to say that he was the driving force for this project, and this uh, would not have happened without him. Uh, we all uh, miss him and uh, his commitment to student success, which is our highest priority at, uh, at BCC. And this building reflects not only his commitment to student success, but also that of our entire tr tr board of trustees, as well as our BCC family. Uh, we're a learning-centered, learner-centered institution, high-performing institution, uh, with student success at the core of what we seek to do. The Health and Science uh, Building, uh, uh, almost $50 million, uh, is uh, really a, 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 quite a state initiative, emerged from a state initiative from Governor Deval Patrick's bond bill. And uh, it is, uh, also includes, as the commissioner mentioned, a modernization of three other buildings on this campus. And for those of you, uh, like Betty Poyer from Attleboro and uh, Bob Cazero from New Bedford, uh, New Bedford and Attleboro bond projects are in the works for the begin uh, the following year in 2016. So we're very proud of that as well. <clears throat> so this is a great era for BCC and expansion. We have, as has been mentioned many times, we have the largest space deficit uh, in the world, I think, but certainly in the, in the community colleges. Uh, and this project uh, uh, would not have come to fruition without the enthusiastic support of Governor Deval Patrick and that bond bill. Uh, Commissioner Cor Cornelison, I uh, thank you, and all of DCAM, as you mentioned, uh, the Department of Energy Resources, and uh, uh, er er Director Eric Friedman, and uh, uh, Commissioner Mike S Mark Silva, and all of the people at the OER. The Mass Board of Higher Education and Chairman uh, Charles Desmond, 
Secretary of Education, Matt Malone, Commissioner of Higher Education, uh, Dr. Richard Freeland, our legislative delegation. You've met some of them today. I'm so honored that they're here, uh, but they couldn't be more supportive on behalf of BCC, and I can't recall a single uh, time uh, that I uh, uh, made a request and uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, supported and uh, pursued by members of our delegation. Uh, very proud of you. Um, so Sasaki uh, Architects, uh, we, I think they have unlimited patience and we tested the limits of that unlimited patience as we plugged through uh, uh, de designing uh, the building. Uh, although I noticed there's no presidential suite in this building. <laughs> And I'm still without a presidential parking place at the college. <laughs> and of course, the Bond Brothers uh, uh, construction. And uh, we're just looking forward to them disrupting our traffic on the route uh, and, uh, and our parade ground out there. But it's all for a wonderful cause, and we couldn't have better partners. In addition to, in addition to furthering our uh, multi-dimensional educational mission, I need to emphasize uh, that this project reinforces the institutional commitment to sustainability. We have, for example, uh, I think we might be the only community college that has an institute for sustainability and post-carbon education. Uh, so we have long been involved with uh, commitments uh, to sustainability. I saw I was one of the founding national signatories for American presidents of colleges and universities to make that uh, car carbon commitment. <laughs> Net zero is, uh, I mean, it's just an outstanding goal, and uh, Platinum Lead, uh, these are all wonderful tar uh, targets, and uh, we're going to make them become reality, and I, I'm so pleased about that. And uh, I know I noticed uh, Senator Pacheco here. Thank you, Senator Pacheco, for coming. I appreciate it. I hope I haven't missed any other elected officials. So on behalf of the extraordinary uh, uh, BCC uh, colleagues in learning, I, I humbly accept this honor uh, for them and for our students on behalf of student success. Thank you very much and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Should we dump it? One, two, two. Thank you.